Our understanding of human evolution, of the long journey that brought us here, is constantly evolving. It's a puzzle, really. We meticulously piece together fragments of bone, teeth, and tools, trying to reconstruct the story of our ancestors. But what if some of the most crucial pieces are missing? What if, hidden away in dusty museum drawers or overlooked in the field, lie the answers to some of our biggest questions? For decades, the study of human evolution focused on specific areas, specific narratives. Africa, often called the cradle of humankind, held center stage, and rightfully so. Yet, this laser focus meant that discoveries in other corners of the globe were sometimes minimized, even dismissed. Fossils that didn't fit neatly into the prevailing theories were often relegated to the sidelines, left to gather dust and faded glory. These forgotten fossils, these outliers and anomalies, hold the potential to rewrite our understanding of the human story. They whisper of alternative paths in our evolution, of migrations and interactions we never imagined. They challenge us to confront our biases, to question what we think we know, and to embrace the messy, complex reality of our deep past. Fortunately, the field of paleoanthropology, like all good science, is constantly evolving. New technologies like ancient DNA analysis allow us to extract genetic information from fossils once thought too old or too fragmentary to study. This has led to groundbreaking discoveries such as the Denisovans, an entirely new branch of the human family tree identified from a finger bone and a few teeth found in a Siberian cave. The Denisovans, along with other recent finds in places like Morocco, Saudi Arabia, and Israel, are pushing back the timeline of human evolution, challenging long-held beliefs about our origins and dispersal patterns. These discoveries underscore the importance of remaining open-minded, of questioning assumptions, and of recognizing that the story of human evolution is far from a closed book. Each new fossil discovery, every analysis and reanalysis has the potential to rewrite our understanding of the past. The forgotten fossils, those tucked away in drawers or left unexamined in the field, represent not just gaps in our knowledge, but opportunities. They are invitations to delve deeper, to challenge existing narratives, and to embrace the ever-evolving story of our origins. In the early 20th century, paleoanthropology flourished, yet it was deeply entangled with colonialism and its biases. European expeditions often reflected imperial ambitions, shaping which fossils were valued and which stories ignored. Fossils became symbols of national pride, reinforcing racial hierarchies and Eurocentric narratives. Indigenous voices were sidelined, their knowledge dismissed as folklore. To truly understand our past, we must confront this legacy and listen to all perspectives. Paleoanthropology's roots are deeply tied to colonialism. European institutions, powered by resources from colonies, led expeditions and shaped narratives through a Western lens. Fossils were shipped to Europe, studied with biased language, terms like primitive and advanced reinforced racial hierarchies. This legacy still shapes the field today. Acknowledging it is key to a more inclusive understanding of our origins. The story of the Tong child discovered back in 1924 really highlights how scientific biases can, well, obscure even the most groundbreaking evidence. This small fossil skull found in South Africa by Raymond Dart had this fascinating mix of ape-like and human-like features. Most notably, the position of the foramen magnum, that's the hole at the base of the skull where the spinal cord connects, clearly indicated upright walking. And that's a defining trait of hominins. Dart understood the importance of this find right away. He named it Australopithecus africanus and argued that it represented an early ancestor of humans. But his claims? They were mostly met with skepticism and honestly, outright rejection, especially from the European scientific community. At the time, the dominant view influenced heavily by the Piltdown Man hoax favored an Asian or European origin for human ancestors. And the idea that an African ape-like creature could be part of our lineage that really challenged the racial hierarchy so deeply ingrained back then. 
a lot of scientists just couldn't wrap their heads around the possibility that humanity's roots might lie in Africa. So, despite its clear anatomical evidence, the Tong child was dismissed as just an odd ape, a curiosity rather than a key piece in the human evolutionary puzzle. It actually took decades of new fossil discoveries and a slow shift in scientific thinking for this fossil to be widely accepted as a hominin ancestor. And that shift wasn't just about new data, it was also about recognizing the biases that had shaped earlier interpretations. The eventual acceptance of the Tong child and the growing recognition of Africa's role in human evolution marked a major turning point, a real paradigm shift in paleoanthropology. But, as with any shift, it also brought along new biases and blind spots. The focus on Africa as the cradle of humankind, which, yes, is supported by a ton of evidence, ended up leading to a kind of neglect of other regions and what they might offer to the human story. Discoveries in Asia, for example, were often interpreted through the lens of this dominant African narrative. Instead of being seen as signs of diverse evolutionary paths or complex migration patterns, Asian fossils were often pushed to the margins, treated like side notes in the grand story of human evolution. And this tendency to fit new evidence into existing paradigms? It's a pretty common trap in science. Paradigms help us make sense of complicated things, sure, but they can also limit our thinking. They can cause us to overlook or even dismiss valuable data that doesn't fit the mold. So, for paleoanthropologists and really for all scientists, the challenge is to stay alert to these biases. It takes a willingness to question our assumptions, to explore alternative ideas, and to accept the messy, unpredictable nature of the fossil record. Human evolution isn't a straight line. It's more like a rich, tangled tapestry made up of many threads. To truly understand it, we've got to look beyond the familiar, seek out the forgotten, and stay open to the idea that our understanding is always, always evolving. In 1924, the Tong child, a fossilized skull found in South Africa, challenged everything scientists thought they knew. With both ape-like and human traits, it hinted at upright walking, a sign of bipedalism. Raymond Dart named it Australopithecus africanus and proposed it was an early human ancestor. But many scientists clinging to Eurocentric ideas dismissed it, unable to accept that human origins might lie in Africa. Still, despite all that early resistance, the importance of the Tong child and the species it represented, Australopithecus africanus, couldn't be ignored forever. Over the course of the 20th century, more fossils of A. africanus, including adult specimens, were unearthed in South African caves. These fossils consistently displayed the same intriguing mix, upright walking, small brain case, and other primitive features, which really started to back up Dart's original claims. Bit by bit, the growing body of evidence began to shift scientific opinion. Researchers started to realize that human evolution wasn't some straight, simple path. Instead, it was a tangled web with multiple branches and a whole range of adaptations. The recognition of A. africanus helped clarify that bipedalism, walking on two legs, actually came before the big jump in brain size that happened later in human evolution. That insight really changed how we think about our evolutionary tree. What was once seen as an outlier, A. africanus, became a key piece of the human origin story. It underscored Africa's central role in our evolutionary past and helped chip away at some long-standing biases that had clouded earlier interpretations. The story of A. africanus is a powerful reminder that scientific progress isn't just about finding new fossils. It's also about being open to revisiting and challenging old ideas. Accepting A. africanus as a true hominin ancestor marked a major turning point in paleoanthropology, opening the door to a more complex and inclusive view of where we come from. For decades, East Africa's Great Rift Valley was the epicenter of human origins research, and it delivered big, but recent discoveries in Chad, South Africa, and even Indonesia are rewriting that narrative. Sahelanthropus chadensis, found in Chad, pushed our split from chimpanzees back to 7 million years ago. And it wasn't from East Africa. Then came Homo floresiensis, the hobbit from Flores, Indonesia.
tiny, small-brained, yet surprisingly recent and capable. These finds challenge the idea of a single cradle of humanity and suggest early hominins were far more widespread and adaptable. They also force us to rethink assumptions, like brain size being the key to evolutionary success. The story of our origins is no longer linear or localized. It's global, diverse, and full of surprises. Convergent evolution, when unrelated species develop similar traits, is a recurring theme in human evolution. Robust Australopithecines and Paranthropus robustus, for example, evolved similar skull features for heavy chewing, despite being from different regions. These similarities don't always mean close relation, they often reflect similar environmental pressures. It's a reminder that evolution doesn't follow a straight path, it adapts, repeats, and innovates. Understanding these patterns helps us decode the fossil record more accurately, and it shows how nature can arrive at the same solution more than once. For too long, Asia was sidelined in the story of human evolution. Despite early finds in Java, China, and India, the focus stayed on Africa. But Asia's vast landscapes held secrets, and a new generation of scientists went looking. With better tools and open minds, they uncovered a rich, complex record of ancient hominins. These discoveries shattered the idea of a single evolutionary path. Asia wasn't a backwater. It was a major stage in our evolutionary drama. In 2003, researchers in Flores, Indonesia found something astonishing, Homo floresiensis. Just over three feet tall with a chimp-sized brain, it still made tools and possibly hunted. Initially dismissed as diseased Homo sapiens, it was later confirmed as a distinct species. Its small size likely resulted from island dwarfism, evolution's response to isolation and limited resources. The Hobbit challenged the idea that bigger brains meant better evolution, and it raised a big question, how did it get to Flores in the first place? In 2007, fossils found in Luzon, Philippines, hinted at another mystery hominin. At first thought to be Homo sapiens, closer analysis revealed a unique mix of traits. The result? A new species, Homo luzonensis. Like the hobbit, it was small, another case of island dwarfism. These Southeast Asian hominins showed that evolution took many paths in isolation, and they proved that Asia was home to more than just modern humans. Homo floresiensis and Homo luzonensis forced a major rethink of human evolution. Asia wasn't just a side note, it was a hotspot of hominin diversity. These discoveries shattered the idea of a simple Africa to Europe migration story. Instead, they revealed a web of lineages evolving in parallel across continents. The Asian fossil record is now central to understanding our past. Eurasia, from Siberia to the Himalayas, holds a fossil record as rich as Africa's. For too long, its story was filtered through a Eurocentric lens focused on Neanderthals. But this vast region hosted multiple hominin species, coexisting, migrating, and interbreeding. These weren't evolutionary dead ends, they were active players in our story. To understand human evolution, we must embrace Eurasia's complexity. It's not a side chapter, it's part of the main plot. In 2008, a tiny finger bone from Denisova Cave in Siberia changed everything. DNA analysis revealed a new hominin, the Denisovans, distinct from both Neanderthals and modern humans. They left behind almost no fossils, but their genes live on in people today. Denisovans were a ghost lineage, invisible in the fossil record, but real in our DNA. Their discovery showed how genetics can uncover what bones can't, and it hinted at a much more tangled human family tree. Ancient DNA has revolutionized paleoanthropology. It revealed that Denisovans interbred with both Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens. Their genes are still found in modern populations across Asia and Oceania. 
This wasn't a clean handoff from one species to the next. It was a genetic mosaic. Interbreeding, migration, and extinction all shaped who we are. Evolution, it turns out, is more network than ladder. The old image of a straight line from ape to human? It's gone. Our family tree is more like a tangled bush, full of branches, overlaps, and surprises. Homo sapiens shared the planet with Neanderthals, Denisovans, and others we're still discovering. These groups competed, cooperated, and interbred. Their DNA lives on in us, proof of a shared, messy, beautiful ancestry. The story of human evolution is still being written, and it's more complex than we ever imagined. The Out of Africa theory suggests Homo sapiens originated in Africa around 200,000 years ago. But discoveries at Jebel Irhud in Morocco are rewriting that timeline. Fossils found there date back 300,000 years, 100,000 years earlier than previously thought. These early humans show a mix of modern and archaic traits, suggesting a gradual pan-African evolution of our species, far more complex than once believed. Discoveries across Africa are reshaping our understanding of human origins, suggesting not one migration, but many over time. These waves of movement, isolation, and return created a rich web of genetic and cultural exchange. Back migrations brought new ideas and genes, further enriching our shared story. Human evolution isn't a straight line. It's a tapestry of movement, adaptation, and connection. And embracing that complexity helps us better understand who we are. The story of human evolution is far from finished. Each fossil, each strand of ancient DNA, whispers of forgotten paths and unexpected migrations. These discoveries challenge what we know and remind us how much we've yet to uncover. It's a winding journey full of surprises driven by curiosity and the enduring power of exploration. And it's a story that belongs to all of us. The human story goes far beyond bones and stones. It's a tapestry of language, culture, art, and innovation, shaped by migrations, environments, and shared humanity. From ancient tools to cave art, each discovery connects us to our past. And as we uncover more, our understanding continues to evolve. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through the forgotten fossils of human evolution. Honestly, we've only just scratched the surface of this fascinating field, and there's still so much more to explore. If you're as captivated by the mysteries of our past as we are, we'd love for you to continue the adventure with Bright Insights. By liking this video and subscribing to our channel, you'll be the first to know when we dive into new discoveries, challenge existing theories, and shine a light on the extraordinary story of our species. We're passionate about making science accessible and engaging for everyone, and we truly believe that by understanding our past, we can better navigate the present and shape a brighter future. Here at Bright Insights, we believe that curiosity is the real driving force behind discovery. So keep asking questions, keep exploring, and keep seeking out the hidden wonders of the world around us. Together, let's continue to unravel the mysteries of our shared past and illuminate the extraordinary potential of our species.